Hi everyone, it's Neve here and welcome to my art journaling channel. Today we're going to be making some textured background panels to make some wall hangings. So this piece is inspired by the Creative Jumpstart uh, online classes 2019 which theme is My Home is My Castle. So check that out if you look up on the web, um, Creative Jumpstart, you'll come across that class. So I'm starting off with a piece of corrugated box. Um, cut down to a 6x6 six six panel and I'm just tearing off some of the back paper so I can expo expose some of the corrugations and this is going to be the base panel for my piece that I'm doing today. And I'm just tearing it in a sort of haphazardy type way. Once I've done that I'm going to get out some um, texture pastes, sorry excuse me I just dropped it, texture paste and these are stone effect pastes from Finnebear Art Extravagance in pumice, limestone and uh, concrete. And I'm just using a plastic knife to apply my different pastes. Going sort of haphazardly on making it really textured because this is going to add to my final piece. Now if you had one of these pastes um, you could just use one. I had all three sitting there. They've all got slightly different grits and grains and so on so I just thought it made it look interesting having the three. You're not going to see the different colours in the background because I'm going to blend over the top of those. If you didn't have these just some texture paste if you've got some of that. If you've got a kid's sand pit try texture paste and chuck in some sand and you'll get the same sort of effect. So um, just play around with what you've got at home. Even if you put some of the texture paste on quite thickly and then put it thinner in other places and dragged your knife through so you've got some textures in it, pounce your palette knife up and down on top of it so you've got some raised bits. There's all sorts of different ways to create texture, so just play along with it. So once I've finished adding all this down on my page, um, I'm going to cheat somewhat. Uh, for those of you who are regulars on this channel, you know I'm really impatient when it comes to drying time. I get my heat gun out and I dry it. If you are a patient person, I would suggest leaving this overnight to dry. Then you've got a really nice solid surface. It's completely dry and you're not going to have any issues. Um, I, did, I did, didn't have any issues doing it this way either. Um, it did take a little while to dry, certainly longer than paint because it is quite thick. And basically all I was waiting for, that the top was dry enough that I could paint over it and it wasn't going to move or the paintbrush wasn't going to drag through the paint. So just to make sure that everything was relatively set. Um, so it did take a little time. Now, I didn't have any problem with fumes or anything, but I do work in a well ventilated area. So, you know, please be cautious with all these things. If you are heating stuff, just be aware if it's smells a little bit funny make sure you've got a fan or an open window or something next to you but I didn't have any of those issues with this. So once it's finished drying I'm then going to apply some gesso to the entire surface. This is going to hide the fact that it is um, done on cardboard and just make a unified piece of work. So I don't usually apply my gesso with a paintbrush um, but in this case it works the best because you can get into all the nooks and crannies going into those corrugations in the cardboard and you can see already with the paint it's starting to pick up those bits of texture. Now don't worry it doesn't need to be completely white because you are going to cover it with other stuff afterwards. This is just to give it a, a fairly even coat. Um, if you are really keen and I probably should have done this, you could also paint the back as well so that you've got a really truly hidden piece of artwork on a piece of cardboard and it's not going to look like it at the end. While the gesso is still wet I'm going to add my next ingredient which is embossing powder. Now these are wow embossing powders, any you've got in your kit will do the same. Um, and I'm just working on some um, Glad Bake, so silicon baking paper. I use that when I'm embossing because it if, if I, the embossing powder does go onto it, I can pour it off really easily and if it melts on there, I can peel it off really easily and reuse it as well. So it's just something I do. So while it's still wet, I'm using the gesso as my embossing ink, so to speak. So it's gone on. It's not moving around as you can see. 
and it's melting. Now if you do look closely at this you will actually see it bubbling. Embossing powder isn't really supposed to bubble. The reason it's bubbling is the moisture from the wet gesso and probably the moisture from the texture paste below is escaping, coming through the um, embossing powder and that's what's creating the bubbling. Again, if you're working in a well ventilated area, it's not an issue. It is actually only steam coming through, um, but you know, just better be safe than sorry. There's something magic about embossing powder just melting. So I'm going along and melting this and making sure it's all melted. Now, with the verdigris, it's a little bit harder to see um, when it was completely melted, but um, if you look close up, you can sort of see it change slight color. The verdigris is sort of like a turquoisey green color with some gold specks through it, so that's why I've added gold in as well. I'm also going to add in some copper because I want to get this sort of really rusted, almost metal looking background peeking through um, the final artwork that I've got. The other reason that I'm doing all this together, so I'm putting on the powders while they're still hot, is I want to build these layers. And by having the texture paste in the background, I'm once this is melted, I'm going to put some stamps into it. Now the embossing powder will hold the impression of the stamps, but because it's on something soft that isn't quite dry underneath, um, it's also going to indent into the texture paste as well. So it was a happy circumstance of not being patient and waiting for the, the texture paste to dry fully. So I'm just using an old um, unmounted stamp. That one has got lots of gears and levers on it. Um, just to press into the background. <coughs> Excuse me. Sorry. So I've just put out some night Dina Wakely paint. And I'm using my gesso brush that had been sitting in water just to get sort of a really wet colour over the background. And I'm painting over the embossing powder. Um, the reason for that is I just want to blend it all in together. I'm going in with a wet wipe now and wiping off the excess that I don't want. So you get that sort of really textured, weathered effect. Once this is finished, I'm going to go in with a fluid acrylic paint. So this is one I've made up. Again, it's a mixture of the Jane Davenport dark blue colour and the night from Dina Wakely. And it just pours beautifully. So. I've just added a really wet paintbrush to it, spritz some water on it and you can see it run down. And the reason I've done this is the darkness sort of sits into those crooks and nooks and crannies, sorry, and um, just picks up all that texture. So you can see that texture now really coming through and it doesn't look like cardboard anymore. So it's a bit of a magic process. So once I've finished doing my background, I did set it aside to dry and I'm just starting to do a collage over the top. So as I said before, the Jumpstart um, theme this year is my home is my castle. So I've just cut out a really simple home shape with a piece of vintage text and I'm going around with a stabilo or pencil just to add some extra detail. Now with my text, I did actually have it upside down. And the reason for that is it, the text is actually in German so it wouldn't have really mattered. I'd, don't speak German. I suppose people who do speak German would want to read it. If you put the text upside down though, your brain registers it as text or as pattern, but it can't read it, so it doesn't waste energy on trying to read it. If you put down text that's readable, your eye is just trained to try and translate it or read it. Um, it's what we do as humans. Now this is a big fail. Uh, this is a like an adhesive sheet that's got like mini 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 glue dots over the background but usually you can press down a piece like this and peel it up and it's just all adhesive in the back. It would have worked really well with the paper dolls that I've got over there. The problem is this is actually a really vintage piece of text. It's like at least 80, 90 years old and it just started to, sh it's really delicate, it just started to shatter as I tried to peel it up. So in the end I have to cut it off that sheet, um, which kind of defeats the entire purpose of what I was doing in the first place. So I'm using these little um, butterfly wings that I've cut out of a collage sheet and you can see here I'm just using up the excess adhesive, pressing it on and it's sticking them to the paper dolls. 
Now I've got a little word from uh, an old Australian company which I wish was still running because its products from about 15 years ago are actually so on trend at the moment and a shout out to anyone else who's got a lot of collection stuff in their um, storage space at the moment. So um, collections used to do this gorgeous set of um, Scrabble letter words that you used to cut out. You used to get like a sheet with 10 or 12 words on it. I've still got a whole heap of my stash but I used to use them to death. They're fantastic for lots of different things. So I found that word and I've got memories on my house. Because this um, piece as I was putting it together, even though it's not me and my grandmother, that's kind of what I was thinking of. There's a photo of me as a toddler sitting out the front of my grandmother's um, house in Ireland, my gr grandmother and my grandfather, um, just sitting on the window ledge with either of them sitting on either side. And I just loved that photo. And this piece, even though it's not that at all, just it really reminded me of it as I was making it. So it was quite fitting for um, everything that was sort of going on in the page. So once I've cut out that house, I need to work out where I want to put it on the page and glue it down. Now the problem I had now was I had that beautiful piece of vintage text and it had a, a plastic back now so I had to find a, an adhesive that would glue plastic. This is another piece from Collections which is vintage um, measuring tapes so I decided to use those and stick them down. I'm just using the uh, red liner double sided tape it's really, really sticky, uh, fantastic for gluing stuff down. I really struggle with getting the red tape off the back though. So if anyone's got any tips and tricks on how to get that off, I do not have nails. So I usually end up having to attack it with a pair of scissors or my craft knife. Um, but if anyone's got any, any hints on how to get it off in less time than it usually takes me to take it off, that would be great. The one thing I was really struggling with this piece was I absolutely adored the background and I really didn't want to cover it up. And the house is quite big and the paper dolls are quite big. So I was sort of really struggling with do I cover this up, don't I, do I just scrap this and do something else instead. But in the end I'm actually really glad I went ahead and put this collage over the top because it really fits together and again sort of with that beautiful memory of my grandmother in the background as I look at this piece um it makes me really happy so the other good thing was I cut a really big window so I could still see the texture coming out of the, the back of the window as well so now I'm just gluing everything down and trying to work out if I want to add this is one of Tim Holtz um, little metal chimes that has that one had something about adventure waiting for adventures or going on adventures but I decided in the end <clears throat> I just wanted to leave it fairly plain which again for a collage piece is um, quite unusual for me but I suppose the background's quite busy so it all it all adds up in the end so I've decided to use this um, Helmars tacky glue to glue this down um, it didn't really work brilliantly I think I had to go back in later on with some gel medium and glue it down as well and it's just because it has that plastic back on if I had not tried to be smart and put those adhesive dots on um, it would have worked fine just with normal glue gluing that down so yeah I'm going in so this is the ultra thick um, gel heavy gel medium and I found that works really well with plastic or metal. So if you if you're really stuck for an adhesive and it's not working the way you want it to, try um, an ultra thick gel medium. That one's from Dina Wakeley, but any thick gel medium will work the same. It makes the best glue. So now I'm just going in again, and I figured stick with a good thing and just using the gel medium to glue down the paper dolls. And then that was pretty much it. So just lining everything up. 
The other thing I've added into the background, and you can see some extra gold there, is I've obviously got the gold in the embossing powder, but I added some Inca Gold Wax as well. Now the reason for that is it's brilliant at picking up the highlights of um, any texture you've got on the page. So it's something that I tend to use um, at the end of a project just to sort of finish it off. So I'm, this is a close up of the, the entire project and you can see all those layers of texture in the background. And it was just such a fun project to work on. Now as I was doing this, I um, went on to do another project as well, which I will um, link to later on, but I'll show you a sneak peek now of a steampunk version of the same thing using the same textures in the background. I also tried doing exactly the same sort of techniques in, on my art journal page and it worked really, really well. That has exactly the same process with those texture pastes and with the embossing powders and it just worked beautifully and just putting the collage over the top. So while I did this in a mixed media panel, you can add it to anything you want. Thank you so much for watching today. I hope this inspired you and until next time, bye.